passion, drive, and patience. The formula of winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything for you to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP it needs to be and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I think we're good to go. Hello, Seth. Yeah, oh, I'm here. Yeah, are we? Beautiful. I didn't know. No, I, I don't know. I was just making sure your mic levels were good. I was just trying to get yeah. you to talk. Yeah, I'm here. Beautiful. Did you have a good break? I did. Yeah, I just, breaks. I'm just dealing with the fallout of people that didn't do well. So, I mean, isn't that part of the? By the way, this is two live Jew on and Seth. Um. I mean, people, it's a gambling thing, right? So are people upset that they lose a gamble? Isn't that part of the fun is that sometimes you win and most of the time you lose? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that is. I mean, look, I don't have $70 to, you know, get into a break at all. I do, you know, $10, $15, anything less than that. But um, I hate to see people lose. Uh, I brought a bunch of my own cards to supplement people that might have not got their money's worth on the break. So, I mean. I I, but I don't understand what that means because uh, isn't it a gamble? Yes. It's a gamble, but I just i i got ripped off a lot when i first started getting into cards and doing breaks and all that and yeah and i know the feeling of walking away feeling like you've been taken gypped a, yeah and i know that that's a racial slur but we don't really have too many uh gypsy listeners yeah. so i think i don't i don't think we're gonna lose our gypsy fan base no no i think we're i think we're good in that scenario so yeah so i i hate the feeling of walking away feeling like you know you got taken advantage of or you lost so people that might like i said people that might not have hit a bunch of cards then I give them some of my decent cards to hopefully make them feel like, hey, I didn't get, you know, as... I get it. You're investing in the business because then they maybe invest and buy more cards in the future versus if they don't and then Bubba Break sucks and then it's all over. Yeah, I mean, look, if I... I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I understand it's not, for, it's not for everybody. You might do and go, fuck this, I'm done with it. But, you know, like I said, I just, I want to just take care of everybody because I know the feeling of, you know, feeling like shit when you get done with those. So. Do, you, do you gamble otherwise? Like, no, just that. Just this. And I did not. I did not that it was gambling for a while yeah and but some, it is and that's okay it, well you know it is but it's a form of gambling where you can you can you know i don't it's is it's, that your favorite vice you think is weed a vice or is it a medicine um we'll get, throw it out of the equation for now yeah I, it's my fa- it's my fa- it's my favorite thing your your favorite vice i'm trying to think about my vices I know it's just working out and being healthy and shit. Oh, uh, no, no. I have vices. I'm trying to what, think. What, are you back on the beignet uh, bandwagon no, or no, what? No, 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 In terms of, like, things that I do, not just bad habits, but things that I, like, engage in that aren't good for my health or whatnot, maybe, I don't know. I don't even think drinking because it's it's very rare. Oh, I picked up a new one. Maybe this. Oh, is here it. we go. Yeah. I mean, a new one. Let's just say in the last year and a half. Is it unhealthy? Years, I don't know. It's it's taken some. Sl- I'll just call it sleep aids occasionally. It's a treat for me, and I try to view it that way. I try not to view it as something that I need to be dependent on or something that if I I need in order to sleep. But every once in a while, like say last night, I just like to get an extra oomph. Been having trouble sleeping lately. Join the club, man. And uh, I I hate when I lose my sleep confidence, which is a a term that I coined last year. (sighs) 
I don't. You never cease to amaze me on this podcast. Sometimes I'm like, man, is there's there's nothing else that Anna can oh, empty can out right go here? Deeper. Holy shit, man! Yeah, <laughs> I lost like... my sleep confidence for, uh, and again, I don't know if that's a, a a thing like in the DSM or anything like that. But to me, it was real. I lost my sleep confidence probably for about six to eight months, maybe more. It felt like almost a year. <laughs> Essentially, where uh, because I'm so neurotic, and I feel like th- this is one of the few things that we have in common, which is Junus and neuroticism. Because I feel like all the things I like, you couldn't care less, and I pretty much feel the same way about you. So I'm trying to find common ground here. But if I have a bad night of sleep, fine. If I have two bad nights of sleep, I'm like, you know, my ears go up a little bit. What's a bad night of sleep to you? I just it's it's hard for me to fall asleep and stay asleep. Um, and then if I have a third night in a row of bad sleep, because in my mind, I think that if I have a really bad night of sleep one night, that inevitably I will have a great night of sleep the following night because I will be so tired from the night before. That, that's the mindset. That's the mindset. So you go, well, I had a bad night of sleep, which means I'm going to be so fucking tired tonight that I'm not even going to be worried about nothing because my body is just going to allow me to rest because I'm so tired. But when that happens multiple days in a row, and by multiple, I mean more than two, then what happens is we enter into the sleep confidence or lack of confidence phase where I now convince myself that this is my new reality and then all bets are off and I'm fucked so that's kind of what happened where I'm like fuck I have lost my sleep confidence I'm a bad sleeper now I can't go to sleep I'm gonna have trouble staying asleep so what happens is every time bedtime rolls around I get in my bed and I'm like I wonder if it's gonna be one of those bad holy shit man and then I start thinking about how I can't fall asleep which makes me stay up and I can't fall asleep and I can't fall asleep and I can't fall asleep. So it's, I'm just trying to learn a, a ways of, of getting myself out of my own head. Is it Ambien? No, it's Xanax, allegedly. Oh, okay. Or, or I mean, maybe other benzodiazepines. Well, and it's not t- necessarily a, a sleep aid, but some people use it that way. Because here's the thing, it's like... Well, that chills you the fuck out, man. Like, that'll if you're thinking about sleeping or not, that'll take away your thoughts about sleeping or not. Trust me, I know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now you know why I walk around on it. I don't have to worry all day. Function, I couldn't function on it. But here's the thing, when I'm really tired and the only thing that's keeping me from going to sleep is anxiety in my running mind, all you need to do is lower the anxiety level, allow yourself to relax, and then your body just kicks in. I, that's that's the wall. It's not that I'm not tired. I am. I just need that anxiety or the the kind of the body is 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 resting, but the mind starts to race. Sometimes that happens. So it just allows me to just lower the bar, and then I can just step right over into sleep land. I used to beat myself up a lot because I've been doing morning since I was 19. So you know, I would wake up at at you know, two or three in the morning. And I would go through the you know the whole fucking day, and you know then when I started doing, uh, and I would worry about it. Like I would go, holy shit, if I don't get to bed by eight or nine, I'm going to be tired for the yeah, next day. Yeah. What's going to happen? Am I going to be able to you know be on the air and do well? So anyway, so then I got out. Once I started working with Drew, I didn't have to worry about you know waking up early in the morning anymore. And I was guess that, was that nice. Did you prefer that? You know, it's funny because you think like two to six in the afternoon, which is when we were on the air. I would probably get there at like noon or so. But sure. you're, you're like, hey, that's the perfect schedule. And then you go. When the times change and you're getting out of work at six and it's fucking pitch black and you're just like, where the fuck did the day go? Yeah. That stuff's a little. De- that stuff's a little depressing. Uh, I think the best time to work is probably middays, ten to three. But yeah, I mean, anytime you don't have to wake up at you know four or five in the morning, it's definitely a win. So, uh, but my thing is now on after I went to therapy. Because I would, I would sit there and fucking worry about it all night that it was the end of the world if I didn't sleep. And then, of course, that doesn't throw you to sleep. Now, I'm just like, hey, I was up last night till midnight. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be fucking t- I got three shows to do tomorrow. I was like, you know what? Whatever. When I'm done, I'll take a nap if I have time. If not, you know, then I'll, then I'll sleep tonight. I'll survive, but, yeah. But it, it's one of those things where I don't beat myself up over it anymore because I just don't feel like there's anything that I can do about it. And I actually don't really take Xanax at night. Like, I'll take it during the day, and then, you know, it can kind of get me through the night. But I, I know what you're talking about. I think that works perfect for sleep. Yeah. I think you just have to – I know for you, you're probably in the spot that I was at, you know, years ago when I was doing mornings, and I just thought – you know, you got shit to do throughout the day. You want to make sure that you're fresh and you're crisp. Yeah. If you're tired, you probably feel like you're going to suck on the radio and it's going to be the end of your life. And there's all those what ifs. So, you know, a little benzo will knock that out for you. Yeah. I don't really feel 
like it's not like I'm commiserating about it all day being like oh god I gotta get to bed um most of the time I'm okay but the last three nights have been a little rough but I know that it's not just it's not my new normal it's just things are a little bit off right now and we'll, we'll get back to uh regular scheduled programming no problem but I have to convince myself of that otherwise I I tend to spiral that's a lot man I've never heard of anything like that before what the the <laughs> losing <laughs> sleep confidence thing yeah. and then you just assume that now you you think that you've acquired a new condition where you can't sleep because I, I was always a really good sleeper. I, I prided myself on pretty much being able to sleep through through most things at, at any places. I mean, I, I remember my roommates in college, I would be just in the back of a car, not drunk or anything, just pass out. Yeah. I'd be on a bus, pass out, be here, pass out. And, and I wouldn't even be tired, but I could get myself in kind of like a drowsy state pretty easily. If you were a 40-year-old man, then that you could start living that experience that you lived back when you were in your 20s, Anna, because you could just like... <laughs> I, I could do it now. I fall asleep on my fucking computer. Like when I'm waiting for the stupid podcast to upload, it's taking forever because I have run like 56K out of my house. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. And I go, I, what am I doing? Like, And then you go, it's, you know, it's one o'clock and I'm falling asleep at my computer. I go... Do I nap it out or do I just you know try to right. stay up to, for the rest of the day? Yeah, I usually try not to nap because that'll fuck you up. But yesterday I did. I did nap because I, I was like, dude, I could try to like struggle bust through the rest of the day, but it's going to be miserable. So why don't I just put myself down, relax a little bit. Put myself down. <laughs> and here's the thing. Like even when I, even if I lie down for a bit and I don't fully fall asleep, I feel refreshed when I get up and start moving again. Yeah. So yeah. I decided to opt for that and I'm, I'm glad that I did because uh, I sleep a shit ton during the weekends, and I know, I know the people. You're not supposed to do that. I know you're fucking not. Who who says you're not supposed the, to sleep? The fucking people, dude. The people say. I thought this. the people say you're supposed to sleep. That you're, you're not sleeping enough. Now the, the people resident- are saying don't sleep. Well, here's what the, the professionals have said, and I hear this everywhere. So it's not like I just heard it from one fucking person. But y- you want to create a lot of regularity when it comes to your circadian rhythm. So if you're gonna get up at five, you should do it every single day. Is what. Is what they say and i say to that is nay absolutely not because if i'm un- if i'm not sleeping enough during the week the last thing i need to be doing is not sleeping enough on the weekends so during the weekends dude i can fucking sleep it's fucking crazy because i thought this was just like a teenage or old person thing and i'm saying it's right between i would say i'm like young middle-aged but I could easily sleep if I don't set a, if I don't set an alarm and I'm just like kind of tired. I could easily sleep twelve to fourteen hours straight. Or no just- drugs, straight through. Stra- Maybe a pee break, okay, pee break or two. Oh man! But without like again. Without drugs, if I'm calm when I go to bed and everything's a okay, I can just slip into a coma. And I swear to God, Seth, I can sleep twelve to fourteen hours with absolutely no drugs. It's frightening. I've never heard of anything like that before, but I uh, that's that's quite impressive. I can't go longer than two hours without getting up. So mm, you mean to like to pee or or other? Yeah, what, what else would I be doing? Yeah, I don't know. You wake up, you're like, oh Jesus, maybe you snore. No, no, I know I, people that snore. I wake up, I. I pee. The worst thing is, is you know, then I'll get on my phone. Or no, the, why do you do that? Well, I mean, I just, oh, that's so, so bad. So I'm checking basketball scores. I'm checking eBay in I'm the checking, middle of the night. Yeah, that's the worst thing that you could do. Is that what they say? I mean, that's. I think it's pretty obvious once you start getting light in your eyes and shit. It is true. Yeah, it, it, it keeps you awake. You want light in your eyes when you wake up, obviously, to wake your ass up. But you know, if you're trying to sleep, you shouldn't be fucking. Because then you think about all the stimuli that you're putting into your brain. You're looking at scores. You're looking at money. You start thinking about money and how you don't have enough of it, or that your team is losing, or you know, whatever. All of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I don't. I don't. It's just kind of. It's kind of part of the new me where I just go. It'll happen when it happens. You know, probably between <laughs> probably between ten and midnight last night. I was I like I said I didn't go to bed till midnight, but I might have fallen asleep like two or three times. But I wake up very quickly for some reason. Well, our, it's like every night I'll only fall asleep for about ten minutes, and I wake up, and then I have to wait till ten, eleven, or twelve until I can finally fall asleep again. And it and it's only for two hours at a time. I get yeah, I can't sleep for more than a couple hours at a time. That's why I'll be honest with you. I know that everybody said you got to get eight hours of sleep, and there's some scientific and circadian rhythm and all that stuff. I, I don't really, I don't believe in that. I don't think we're supposed to sleep as much as they say that we are. I understand that it's healthy mm. and you need it, and I get all that stuff. But I don't think that we're, I don't think we're meant to sleep for long periods of time. Or would it be this hard? 
It wouldn't be this hard to sleep if we were meant to sleep all the time. Mm, well, you got to think we got a lot of stresses in our life that we didn't in the environment that we evolved, but... And a, a lot of things that are just kind of like unnatural. You, you know, most people in the environment in which we evolved, we would kind of go to bed with the sun. What do you say, like back in the Noah uh, Noah's Ark days that they, they were able to, you know, fall asleep no problem? Well, there were thousands of years of evolution before, I would say, the advent of, I don't want to just say civilization, but let's say, I think what was really problematic problematic for human health was probably the industrial revolution which also helped a lot in other regards but in terms of staying up past the sun i think that really fucked people up and then you have screens which i feel like zing your brain in a, in a weird way that give you energy when you shouldn't have energy or at least they don't allow you to fall asleep when you should be able to fall asleep i think those sorts of things aren't great and kind of interfere with uh what do you do with your phone you, you put it down on the charger and and set your alarm and that's it uh, if i wake up in the middle of the night to pee i go i get right back in bed bed and try to close my eyes and are you curious as to see if anybody has hit no, you up at all oh no 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 um that shit can wait that oh is, yeah i never do that because the thing is is I'll, I'll be up all fucking night and so and then that'll give me anxiety because i won't sleep obviously and then the next day is going to be shit the best thing about the best thing is just I get back to direct messages that I've had for like three weeks where I can finally get back to people because that's what I start doing when I'm up. So, well, what about during the rest of the day when you're supposed to be awake? You, you don't get back to people then. Um, not. I mean, it's there's a lot of the Bubba Army is it's great in the fact that there's always a lot of questions, there's always a lot going on, and so I try to take some time like in the night to whether I'm doing like a live video on Instagram or you know what whatever I'm doing selling cards to you know make sure that I'm I'm getting back. Don't and you think you should have more boundaries or stronger boundaries where you're like okay when I go to bed and when I wake up whatever unless it's a fucking emergency obviously which. You know, I or maybe not, but the phone should just be off. You shouldn't look at it, and you just give yourself time to kind of rest, decompress, and disconnect. Yes. Do you think there's any sort of power, or uh, can you get any sort of enrichment from disconnecting? Because I feel like you you don't have that. Because for me, I'm like when I'm asleep, like you can you can message me, you can call me. I'm not going to fucking answer. So no, I'm connect. I'm connected twenty four seven. I okay. mean, I have it set up to where I mean, my phone's always on silent, but it, you know, I sleep with my phone. So if I get a text message, I'll hear it. If there's something on eBay. I'll, I thought you said it was on silent. It is on silent, but it but but it buzzes like it vibrates. So when so I have, you have a, the haptic, what is it, the haptic response or something? I, I don't. I don't know. It just goes like yeah, it's, vibrating. Yeah. So that's that's all it does. So I mean, and then I see who's you know text messaging me in the middle of the night, seeing if it's important at all. So. Huh. Yeah. My dad did that. And when I was staying at his place, uh, I think it was the year before last over Christmas break, I could hear it through the fucking wall. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you have your notification sounds on in the middle of the night? My dad's like, yeah, why wouldn't I? I'm like, so you can fucking sleep. He was like, yeah, I haven't been sleeping well. I'm like, I wonder why. So now he's he's turned it off and he sleeps much better. And I'm like, yeah, go figure. I'm just motherfucker. I'm just I'm too connected to my phone. I'm too addicted to it. You know, like I don't watch TV at all. So I'll just sit around and look at my phone at night. And yeah, sometimes I'll be like, my eyes are tired. But that's when I'll you know close my eyes for a few minutes. I'll be like, all right, shit. I just something just popped in my head. Oklahoma City Thunder are playing. Let me check the score and then I get mm. back on it. So. Again, that's just something I've learned to live with. I just I I've never slept eight hours. I've never slept more than three or four hours straight. Um, you know, it's that's been my whole life. So I don't know if it's anything I'm doing now or anything back then or it's just my makeup. But what about like when you're on vacation or something? No. Or, uh, not that you camp. I think that's a horrible example because I imagine you don't do that. But do you ever just want to completely disconnect at all? And and then will you come back refreshed, you know? Yeah, but you know what? I, we're a slave to these devices. And listen, you're not alone in this. I am as well. I wish I, I wasn't. But there there is something that is very, very addictive about this sort of shit that I, I feel like I'm not fully in control of. And when I feel that way, I want to throw my phone against the wall. The, the only the only disconnect I could ever I've ever felt is when I'm not working in radio, when I'm doing a marketing job or I'm you know working at Kawa or whatever the fuck else I was doing. Yeah. I don't need to be on my phone. You know, communicating with people, getting back to people, checking podcast numbers, you know, all that other stuff. So when I'm in radio, as much as I would like to just go and, you know, put my phone away when I get home, there's just there's just too much there's too much to get to or, you know, not like it's work or anything like that. But there's just too many, too many things that I could be doing online. Mm -hmm. Um 
again, not the most important things in the world, but just sure. things that I feel like I need to do to make sure that, that I'm doing my job the right way. Yeah, and again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't check those things at all, but kind of have like a, de- a designated amount of time where you're just not looking at anything. I let, love let that. Them, letting those eyes rest I love bit. that. I need somebody to come in and take my phone and, you know, come give it back when it's time to, for the alarm to go off. Yeah, I feel like I have bad, I know this sounds weird, but like bad phone hygiene, I guess if that would make sense. I know there's some people who are really into the health and wellness space that they don't even keep their phone near their bed. Like they have a old school alarm clock where they have those to get don't up. Work. Yeah, I, I freak out with those for some reason. But I, where they have to like get up, turn it off. The phone is in a different room, so they're not tempted to look at it in the middle of the night or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I would rather just sleep with my phone than than try to you know be, be better than try to. I mean. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes you a, a bad person or anything no, like no, that. No, I, I, think, th- I think that's a wrong s- the spectrum to look at, good and bad. I'm, I'm saying in terms of bad, not morally, but just like bad for your health is what I'm saying. Like not good for your health, not doing yourself any favors. Oh, all right. Well, I'll think. I'll listen to this when I'm falling asleep tonight and maybe it'll <laughs> help me throw no, my I phone mean, across whatever, the room. Do, do whatever you want. I'm just trying to help you. No, I don't nothing, know. The, oh, the best thing I could have done, Anna, was to let myself go from that pressure that you you have right now. That was the best thing I could do because I would be a fucking wreck if it was midnight last night and I couldn't fall asleep. So Yeah, I, again, it's, it's getting better, but I'm just saying good. like the last several nights have been hard for me to fall asleep and, and I didn't stress about it oddly enough. Enough, which is very unlike me, but um, I decided now that I have this certain tool in my toolkit, I was like, you know what? Tonight's the night. Give yourself a little bit of a, I think of it as, as like mental cheesecake, you know, where it's not <laughs> something you want to have, every, maybe a mental beignet, if you will, okay. where it's not something you want to have all the time, but every once in a while you treat yourself. And that's exactly what I did last night. And I think it's a, the actual drug, but I think even more potent is the placebo effect where you're taking something you think is going to help you. Like you you fully believe that this is going to make you drowsy or relax enough to fall asleep. And just the security of knowing that it will happen tonight helps me. I, Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I'm okay, with you. Great. I'm medicine boy. Yes, you are. Um, I did want to ask you about this because I've noticed something around here and and I'm sure you feel it as well. It's it's pretty palpable, at least in my opinion, is that you and Brian have a lot in common. (laughs) This isn't going where you think it's going. I've set it up like I'm assuming you guys that you're you're gay together. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. But I see a beautiful budding friendship where, again, I don't think you're both liberal snowflakes, but that's kind of the brand around you and Brian. You're both funny guys. You're both into sports, but don't play them. You're, you know, you both have daughters that are pretty much the same age. You, you and Brian yourselves are two weeks apart, right? He's oh, 42, yeah. you're 42, yep. February 1st, February 14th. <laughs> um, I just feel like there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, similarities. And I feel like you don't really have a lot of male friends. Why not befriend Brian, not just as a work friend, but as a friend friend. What do you... uh? I'd like to see, maybe you do like a mandate with your daughters or something, and maybe your wives can become friends, and it can just be oh, like... shit, Anna. You got us all going out now? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You know, she, he, she, he can come over to the house, bring the wife, bring the kid. Everybody has a buddy. You're talking to Brian. You know, Phoebe's talking to his wife. The kids are playing together. I don't know. I just can I tell you? And I, it could be fun. I appreciate you setting up play dates for, yeah. for the adults, but I, just, I see it so clearly. It's it's there, Anna. But I will tell you this, and this isn't this is not one of those things where you don't have kids, so you don't understand. But like when you have a when you have a kid, it's just like I don't know. I'm probably not the same as everybody else, but if I Brian's busy as shit being a lawyer. And so then when Brian has time, you know, he's hanging out with his family or he's taking care of his, you know, uh, you know, mother and father, all that stuff. You know, like to me, Brian is the guy that doesn't have any time to, you know, sit around. Yeah. And if he did, do I think that he would want to hang out with me? Would we go to a lightning game? Would we go to a spring training game together? Yeah, it's very possible. But I also see him once a week. You know, we talk for you know a few hours and we go and we do the card break and we talk and him and I text. So I just think the the. You could be friends with somebody, but I think the hanging out aspect isn't necessarily there when you get older. Um, 
or at least it's probably less so as you get older and you have a life and stuff. But Brian, like no bones about it, Brian goes out. Like, he does fun stuff. He likes to have a good time. Yeah, he's got a lot on his plate, but who doesn't? And he does stuff with his daughter. Like, the daughter has friends. He has to go to her, you know, recitals or dances or whatever. What do you know? Are you following him on Facebook? Where's he putting out all this information? No, Brian and I talk during Hot Mic sometimes. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, she did soccer, and then she does this, like, uh, kid fitness thing, and we're did he doing... ask you to? Did he ask you to set us up? No, no. It's more just like the matchmaker in me is like, damn, you know, you're not the easiest person to get along with, and neither is Brian. And it seems like there's just a lot of compatibility there, and a lot of things you guys just have in common on the surface. And I just thought, damn, it'd be really cool if your families could be friends. <sighs> Because then you kind of, you were talking about how you don't have very many male friends. You said the close ones you had have passed and you have a lot of, or a few close girlfriends, but I think it's important to have same sex relationships with <laughs> what the other. Fuck? <laughs> what podcast no, did you I'm this just, no, I, this is no, from no podcast. This is just straight from the dome. Like, I just think, because here's the thing. This is how I feel about things. I. Work, what are you and Kevin Hazel going to hang out? Oh, uh, Kevin and Hazel and I talked on the phone quite a bit yesterday. Oh, did just you? catching okay. up on life. We're actually like, we enjoy speaking with each other when we can't do a podcast together. We just podcast on on a telephone. I know. I under, listen. I and c- we don't we don't just like gossip about what's going on. We talk about like life. Like we go deep. I on I go fucking deep. I can tell. I could tell when he walked in here yesterday. Just light up. Yeah, you. I mean, you love it, and, and it's strictly for the conversations at a much higher level. I, I totally understand right, that. So right. I know he's the kind of guy that can give that to you. He's a worldly, worldly man who's on his way to Vietnam right now as we speak. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that you get a lot of enjoyment out of that. So sitting on the phone talking to him, I, I could see why that would be a positive thing. Right. And so I feel like I see the same sort of light in your eyes when, when Brian's here. You you applauded when, when Bubba introduced him on the show. No one else did. No I one know. else gave I, a fuck. Well, I feel like when you announce somebody, you got to applaud. It's just, well, it's just my thing. He, he introduced the rest of us and I didn't hear a clap. Oh, shit. Well, maybe I'm just, maybe it's because I, I see you all the you time. You love Brian and that's okay and he loves you too and I see, you know, I'm, I'm waiting outside ready to start this show and I'm like, I thought they were done. Why are they still in there? And I peep my head in and just, you guys just fucking, you Oh, know. sorry. Yeah, we should. No, no, no. It's I, not not a bad thing. I'm again. I'm just like I. I see it. It's clear as day that you guys should be friends outside right, of the office. How about this? How about this? Let me draw this. Let me see if I can. Can you draw do a par- play date with Brian and, and the child? We possibly could, but let me let like me see, see if that. I can draw a parallel here that makes sense. I'm doing this on the fly. Sure. Let's say Brian and I are porn stars. Yeah. And we fucked. We just fucked hot. today. Okay. Yeah. Girl, girl and the boy porn star. And we fucked, and man, we got we got great chemistry, and we just nailed the scene. And Brazzers is going to go fucking wild. Adam Twenty Two is going to get Lena the plug hooked up with it. Like yeah, everybody's yeah. just everybody's going crazy. And then we come out, and people were like, "Man, you guys just you guys fuck the hell out of each other. That's great chemistry. Why don't you guys date each other?" And you're like, "No, nah, we're good. Like this is it's good to work together. We can do good stuff together. But you know, we don't need to take it out of here. Like we just we just fucked. We don't need to go fuck again. We're cool." That's kind of how I feel with Brian. Like we talked, huh. we did our thing today, and like this is this is how I hang out with people. You know, this is my element. So, yeah, but I did, feel did like the porn star thing. I really felt like I had something there. But here's the difference. I don't. Here's the difference is that if you and Brian just had good chemistry on the air when the mics were running, I'd be like, all right, they just have good chemistry or they like each other, whatever. But it's you linger. You guys like to talk afterwards. You don't want the moment to end. I know he doesn't want to leave you. And I know you don't want to leave him. That's the difference. If the the two fucking porn stars after they fucked were like hanging out in the I don't know. They might take a shower around the together. water cooler for another two hours just chatting it up. And then someone's like, Why don't you guys date? And you're like, No, oh, no, we don't have any chemistry. It's like, yeah, you do. And not just on camera, but off camera. And it's everybody can can see it and smell it. So I was just thinking, because it's just so funny, because every time you're like, oh, yeah, the daughter, like, Brian will be like, me too. Or, you know, it, Brian will say something, and then you'll be like, yeah, me too. Cards. Car-. I'm like, what the fuck? Why don't you just fuck already? Why don't you just hang out already? Cards, daughters, cards, daughters, cards, daughters. Cards, daughters, wives, in-laws. Snowflakes. In-laws, snowflakes, <laughs> liberals, pussies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, come on. Oh, you guys even kind of, I don't want to say like of similar size, but p- possibly of similar strength. I don't know. 
I just see that there's <laughs> so many things that align, and I just feel like maybe if your daughters could meet each other and be friends, then you really have a good male friend that you could kind of lean on. I do think there is one difference. I think that Brian might be a little bit more psychologically stable than you, and I think that that rubbing off on you would be a good thing. Okay, I see. I see. You what, know what I mean? Yeah. All right. I see where you're going with this now. I I, I I think that that would help, and I think that you you both are very funny and animated guys. You have a lot in common, so there wouldn't be any sort of like awkward. You just talk about fucking sports for eight hours. You'd be plenty entertained. Well, he's a he's a little imi- uh, I was gonna, he's a little intimidating because of how smart he is. I think you're quite bright. Oh, well, I appreciate it. But I like he's uh I mean Bubba told me or somebody like he's like a borderline been tested as like, like Mensa. A, yeah, he's like a genius or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's he's very smart, but here's the thing is like you don't have to discuss fucking immigration policy with that guy. I or, know I can't or tape law. up that hole. Stop oh. letting him in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See? exactly. And the and the thing is is like you make it very apparent when you don't want to talk about something. So he, and and here and Brian is so multidimensional that he could go on and on and on about politics just as much as he could go on and on about fucking sports and cards and stuff. I think that so, I got to be honest. I think I think it should really be okay that I don't I don't give a fuck about politics, yeah. and that if there's a conversation going on with you or Brian or Dan and you know Bubba and all that, like I don't feel like I need to insert myself because. I don't know anything about it. It doesn't interest me. And there's enough people in here to carry on a conversation without me having to throw myself in. You know, right. like, and that wasn't the point I was trying no, to no, make. No, no, I know. But I want to say also, like, the uh, the, 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 guy, the driver today, like, that's not my thing at all. I was yeah, reading, me neither. I, I didn't reading, say a damn word. Yeah, people were like, oh, you know, who looks more bored, Anna, Seth, or Babyface? And I'm like, what What do I need to do? Like, I, I'm not going to force myself in here just to be heard. Sure. You know, Bubba knows this guy. Bubba knows all about it. Like, he can handle it. So um, I don't know where all that came from. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, there are things that I do I don't like talking about at times, but uh, understood. And that yeah. w- that wasn't the point I was making. The oh, point I, I was making is that you were saying Brian was like too smart and he intimidates you. Yes, but you both know a, an equal or equal ish amount about things you're both interested in. So it doesn't matter if Brian is really smart because he can talk sports with you just as well as you could talk sports with him. That was what I was trying to say. Yeah, no, no, no I get like, don't be intimidated by him. Yeah, okay, no, um, I, I respect that. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, like I have I have tickets to. To, you know, a Yankee spring training game today that I can't go to because what the fuck? Did you give it to Brian? I ha- I have him right now on me. If anybody can get at oh. me before six oh five, no. But that would be the kind of thing where you know I'd be like, hey Brian, do you want to go six oh five on a third? This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, the dating app to find someone you can be yourself with. Why doesn't eHarmony allow copy and paste in first messages? Because you are unique, and your conversations should reflect that eHarmony wants you to find someone who will get you. How are you going to know who gets you if people send you the same generic conversation starters they message everyone else? Conversations that actually help you get to know each other. Imagine that. Get who gets you on eHarmony. Sign up today. Thursday night. Probably not. Probably just getting under the office. Probably wants to go home and see yeah, his that's family. Not, that's not the move. I, I'm thinking- but that's, the, that's how I would hang out with somebody. no, 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 no. no. Can we just do this? Can you try to do this by the end of the fucking year? Okay, so we're giving you plenty of time to do this. Could you just maybe do do a, a play date where they come over, your families meet each other, the kids hang out? Because I think you're going to like it. And I could see if this were to develop over, you know, a given amount of time, you might be like barbecue friends. You know what I mean? I've got barbecue friends. They're black. There's no white barbecue friends. The barbecue friends are Damn the- friends. Barbecue. I've got. You've barbe- never mentioned them once. They, they cut your hair, motherfucker. They're not your friends. I got barbecue. <laughs> Come down to do a podcast here. I got <laughs> barbecue friends. They give me the big piece of chicken. Okay. All right. What? Well, Come on. This isn't. This, this is not even think... as close to racist as things that have been said today. Oh no, no, no. That's not what worries <laughs> me at all. I'm just. I would just like to see you at least try to have a close male confidant. And you think Brian's the best? Can I, think I tell that's you? That's the man for I, you. I think it's bu- obvious. I think Bubba and I could hang out. Uh, you don't think so? I I don't I don't know. Okay. I mean, you guys again. You make great music together, in, in the sense that you do great radio together. I think you, you guys bounce off each other quite well. But there's really not a lot of compatibility there. Do you know I don't all. like? I don't. You know I don't. You know why I'm friends with girls because I don't need to have anything in common with them. Like I, to, having th- something in common with somebody doesn't. 
I don't it doesn't isn't what I'm looking for. I want to look for th- things in somebody that interests me that I would want to know more about that I would want to ask some questions about that I would feel cool being around. Like that's what I look for in a friend. Okay, but I and I I would see that more so with like a partner. Like you want someone that compliments you, but as far as a friend goes, what do friends do together? They do stuff that interests them together. And I'm not saying you have to perfectly align or anything like that. But it what seems do you do like, with your friends? What are you doing? Are you? I mean, are you be going to brunch? Like, are you? What kind of activities are you doing with with your lady friends? We brunch. We also like to do at least with my closest friends. My closest female friends. I'm very excited. I will see this weekend. Um, we have a lot of similar values. It, it goes beyond just interests, which a lot of us align on. But my, I would say my best friend, uh, Aaron, her and I have a lot in common in terms of things that we value. And also we'll do not just brunch. We, we, we're multidimensional. So, yeah, we get, like to get fucked up together and do that. But we also have uh, like uh, health and wellness days. I know that sounds like so fucking lame. But we will do like hot yoga or we've done the cold plunge thing together. Um, We'll go for like nice walks on a nice day and she has a child. So we'll bring the child and we'll just talk and walk and or work out together and stuff like that. Do 5Ks, do 10Ks, that sort of deal. So, um, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just, I just wanted to I just, I just see it in, in front of my face, just blatantly obvious. And I'm just thinking like, damn, maybe Seth could really benefit from this friendship as would Brian. I, I think it's mutually beneficial. And I just think that, you know, again, it, it'd be cool. Like think about like your, your daughter's friends. Right. And it's like, uh, you have to pick her up this and that. But if like Brian is already your friend and the girls are friends, then like everybody gets a play date. <laughs> But not everybody's looking for a play date. I don't know. Can you at least try? Just try to hang out with Brian off the clock once in the next ten months. Can you do that? Yeah, I'd I'd be willing to do I that. Know how it goes. Just for this, just for the sake of, just for the sake of this podcast. Yes, I'd be for willing. the sake of this podcast. B- Brian would fucking. I mean, I'll probably wait till next Thursday, but I'll be like, and I'll tell Bubba ahead of time. But if I'm just like, hey, Brian, you want to hang out? I, I can give him a specific like. Do you want to go to USF? Or it has to be a whole family thing. Yeah, I'd like to see at least the daughters hang out. Don't we have to hang out to know that everybody before they co- meet the family? All right. Yeah, yeah. Just do you and you and uh, you and Brian. Brian. So like, hey, can we go to like a USF game because Rhett and Lummy have the hookup or something like that, and they're like, hey, man, this was fun. Let's uh, let's get the family. Let's make this a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. We'll do putt putt next week or something like that. Just, yeah. Then, okay. All right. Just just something. I I think that the, I could see it that you you want to hang out. You don't know how to make the first. Step and I'm just trying to. <laughs> Do I seem lonely? Um, no, you seem av- avoidant. But and I know that's by choice, obviously. But I just think that there's you're you're so quirky, and Brian is too, and your weirdness complement each other or they're the same type of weirdness a lot of overlap okay all right and i can see that you feel very comfortable around him and you root for brian and and brian roots for you and that's rare because both of you are very unlikable so i just when i see this beautiful match made in heaven and nobody else is commenting on it i'm like what the fuck like these guys need to be friends like real friends not just radio friends where are you reading this unlikable stuff the uh the comments on the show have really changed lately as far as who people oh hate. i don't read chat this oh, okay. is just you know oh, okay yeah I'm projecting. I, I, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you really honestly i mean I'm, yeah i still have my you know people that aren't a fan of mine but uh i've i've read less and less uh mean stuff about you since i started really yeah i mean like you know there's there was stuff obviously. when you they started you mean for the second time yeah for the oh, second okay. time like there was stuff there you know because it was like you know get rid of her says there get rid of seth keep on up but i yeah. i seem to i seem to be seeing consistently people that are a fan of you and so and i and i've had people reach out that said this podcast changed the way people look at you because they give them gave them more of like a insight into your mind and how it works and everything like that so yeah um i know that you know bubba throws out on the air that how much we're hating all that stuff and look we have we of course we're we're polarizing. That's what we have to do. But sure. it's not. Uh, it's not as bad as it as it might have been at one time. Just I'm not telling you to go read anything. I'm just letting you know from somebody that sees everything. Sure. It's it's looking. It's looking better. Looking better. It's looking yeah, better from yeah. you know for the positivity angle. And I was being you know slightly hyperbolic. No, no, no. About I know, that. but I want to. But I look. I'm. I read. But the- you're quirky. Brian's quirky. Yeah. I'm quirky. But your quirkiness seemed to really align. And every time that you guys are in studio together, it's just like a fucking magnet, bro. And I'm just 
just like, why doesn't anyone say something? You know what happened, Donna, when I first started? And, man, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Babyface was a regular. And I started my first couple of days. And I think Dan was here. And Babyface was the first guy that would just zing Bubba, you know? And I sat next to him, and I kind of was like, oh, it's okay to make fun of Bubba and the way that he does it. And he kind of gave me the confidence to start, you know, being myself on the air. Yeah. So I, he... Maybe I feel a connection to it because he, he, without knowing it, he helped me very much early on get comfortable and, you know, be who I wanted to be on the air. Right. So I always kind of would, you know, I, I'd always look to him. He looks to me, you know, when we say stuff just like, you know, you and Kevin do. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll set up a date for us. Okay, I'll wonderful. I'll set something up. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be anytime soon. I know you guys both have shit going on in your lives, but just at some point, it would just be nice if you would, you know, just... Try and and being the first person to make a move is always scary. I know <laughs> making friends as an adult is really fucking a, a, an art that's hard to finesse. Well, I that's think. why I, I quit. I don't. I'm not searching for friends. I've been, where, I know. I know. Are you on a are, are you on a constant quest for friends? No, no. But I feel like I have a sufficient amount. And when I've asked you, you're like, I have, I have this person and that person, and that's pretty much it. And I'm like, damn. What if I'm qual- What if I'm quality over quantity? That's fine. That's fine. I just, again, I'm not saying sir, just go out searching for friends for the sake of searching for friends. It's saying I see this unbelievably mag- unbelievable magic, magical connection between these two people. Why don't they take it to the next <laughs> level? Is what I'm saying. Man, I feel like we feel like yeah. you are really trying to set up like some gay version of The Bachelor for us. That I just uh, think it'd be cool. I, I just think it, I think maybe you need a little bit more like male interaction, as I need female interaction. I don't realize how how bad I am with interacting with women until I I brunch it out and I go. This is a weird like muscle I'm exercising out right now because I've always worked with all men for the last seven, eight years, even when I was when I was at Cox, obviously, when I'm here. And then I also had a job at Hornblasters where I was the only female as well. So I'm around men all the fucking time, which is fine. I work well with men most of the time. I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm a one of the guys. I'm like not, but no. I blend like I blend. It's not like who's this random t- whatever I can yeah. talk about. It, besides sports, obviously, wh- whether it's politics or current events, whatever, I can kind of make it work. Um, but when I when I have brunch with the ladies, it's it's so apparent that I I don't really feels weird. I remember one day I did a show with Micah and JoJo, okay. and I felt like a, a man in drag, like I had never done a show with another woman before, let alone two. And I think it was uh, Migs and Swigs was out, and so JoJo was in. She brought Micah and myself in, and I was just like, "This is a completely different experience being with two other women I, the way i interacted i couldn't like fucking just start ribbing them like i do the boys or like being like you're you look fat ha huh? you know I, I can't do that well the, i mean the radio is different when you get paired up with you know people on the radio especially you know if it's all girls and it's not something you're used to it's it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable sure but i as far but it felt good is what i'm saying oh, okay. it felt good okay it felt really good to kind of stretch my feminine wings because they lay they're they're dormant most of the time and then i go to jujitsu and that's that's fucking 85% dudes as well. So I just, I make it a point to make sure that I get enough of that estrogenal influence, which is why I've set up two brunches back to back this weekend. There we go. The All one ladies. with Tara, right? Yes. The one with Tara and Jennifer on Saturday and then the, the one with my my uh, regular crowd on Sunday. So I'm definitely going to get... All that um, that estrogen, estradiol, progesterone kind of influence, which I think will be good for me. It's good. It's, yeah, it's good to see. I'm a, I feel like I'm like a different person, but it's just really a different side of me. Does that make sense? When you're out with your friends, when I'm out with like women, yeah, you know, oh, fuck, I mean, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm just like I like that side of me because I, uh, I've unlike, never seen that side of you. Yeah, neither have hot, <laughs> or most of the time I don't. And it, it, it feels good because unlike most of the, the people around here and, you know, I'm not in here in America, but it, everyone's always trying to change and be something else. Like, I I want to be a woman. I am a woman. I'm not a very girly woman, but I think it's important to kind of just lean into that sometimes because I forget. 
I forget that, like, you know, when I put on a dress, I'm like, oh, this feels different. <laughs> this feels different. Oh, look at I put on some fucking mascara and I don't look fucking homeless. But here's the thing. I love looking homeless. That's the problem. That's what people don't get is they think that I don't like, oh, she, you know, she doesn't want to look that way, but she can't help it. It's like, no, I'm actively trying. I love being comfortable more than I can even express to you. I love being comfortable. I hate being like anything too tight. No, that I mean that that makes total sense at all. But paint on my face. But after the after the years of Bubba talking about you know you looking what did he call you today? Or was he had something? He said that he's like most shows have a hot chick. I just have a chick. Yeah, that one got a pop, and I'm like that was pretty funny. No, there was something he said about like what you looked like. Like you looked like a like a shopping. I don't know something. Yeah, I don't know something. But um, Mm -hmm. what the fuck was I gonna say about? uh, I said you look like. Yeah, does that has any of that like tried to propel you to to wanna put on makeup and shit every day or you just I mean it's just too much it's just um it almost it it almost makes me want to do it less okay I get that not just to maybe as an act of defiance to be like you know I'm not gonna do because you told me to do it sort of thing maybe a little bit of that but mostly it's dude I wake up at 502 always 502 I don't know why. I just five o'clock just seems way too early. Five o two is when I wake up. By five eighteen nineteen latest twenty, I'm out the door. So it, fast, I can get ready in sixteen minutes. Everything dressed, brush my teeth, hair back, shoes on, coffee made, grab a water, out the fucking door. Impressive. Yeah. So if I tried to factor in looking nice and putting on makeup. Uh, that would take a significantly more amount of time that I'm just really not willing to invest, especially because it's just such an early start time. I just yeah, can't. I mean, I know the women that are on the news, like on Fox 13. Waking up at 2.30. Oh, I shit. mean, they're waking up at 2. They're, I mean, they're waking up at like 2, and then they Ugh. have to do their own hair and makeup, which I guess takes like two hours. So they oh, go in there and that. they work on that. So, yeah, that's just total part of that. I don't want to go to bed at 4 p.m. But, I, you know. That, no, that's not for you. It's, yeah. it's good. Don't worry about, uh, you know. I look at people like Jen Epstein and... And I see her at 6 a.m. just full beat, makeup on, all that sort of hair done, looking just at 10 out of 10. And I, I just get exhausted for her. I'm like, I know how much, not saying she's, you know, she has to put in so much work, but you have to have that look. It takes a while to do your hair so it looks that good and your makeup so it looks that on point. And I just look at that and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't even fucking imagine, like, Sitting in a chair. She does it herself, you said? Yeah, She's, yeah. And, and and getting that done, it probably takes her like at least 60 minutes to do all that, maybe an hour and a half. It's just, fuck, I could spend some, I could spend that time sleeping, man. No, it's, uh, it, they love their job, though, you yeah, know? And yeah, I, yeah, yeah, God I bless them. I don't know if a lot of, I don't know if a lot of news stations have like hair and makeup teams. I can't imagine anybody would. They'll just be like, do your own fucking hair and makeup. Yeah, not but, probably on the local level. But Yeah, but they, um, I mean, they, uh, they go to sleep at like, you know, six or seven. It's not, yeah. it's definitely not a, a staying up, you know, till eight or nine thing when you have that lifestyle. So. Right, right. And I, I know a lot of women enjoy getting ready. Like that, uh, there's a lot of get ready with me videos I've noticed on Instagram and YouTube. It's a thing that people like to watch and a thing people like to do. I just don't like that shit. Is that just a way for women to show off their sponsored clothing, you know, uh, you know, sponsors or something like that by changing their outfits? Like it can't just be for content. It's got to be sponsored it's, shit, there's right? something about... I don't know, watching that sort of content, which is really calming. Like, I know this sounds crazy, and I'm not proud of it, and I'm trying to spend less time on social media, but there's some people that I follow, and they're just, they'll be like, clean my house with me sort of a thing, and they'll put maybe a minute or two video of them. Obviously, it's edited, and it's just them taking a messy house and making it clean, and I... Love watching that. And maybe it's because I'm OCD and I like clean shit and the feeling of a completely clean house. But I like watching people like clean, put things away. It's all organized and nice. And So you like to watch that? You like to watch people get ready? It's just, it's calming and relaxing to watch sometimes. Okay. Not a full, you know, 18, 20, 30 minute video, but if it's like a minute long or two minutes long, it's like weirdly satisfying okay. in a way that's hard to put into words it, it tickles a weird part of my brain kind of like the eating thing but that almost makes more sense to me because I, it, I clearly have a lot of psychological issues with food and that is somehow a way for me to enjoy it without indulging 
if that makes sense. Oh, it does. I'm psychotic. Yeah. No, I'm trying but. to. I'm trying to figure out if there's videos that uh, make my brain feel calm. Yeah. Do you do you ever watch like blackhead removal videos? No. <laughs> Because those are really nice, and they put a, a very calming kind of spa-like music in the background. No, 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 And they no, just no. pop this shit, and you just see, like, <laughs> like all these little squirts and stuff, and it's just so nice to see the clean skin when they're done. No, I like to see a lot of, mm. like, positive sports moments and all that. There was this video I watched the other day about... Uh, Jason Kelsey, Travis Kelsey's brother, and Jason just retired. Yeah, I and, saw him and crying. The, yeah, and the guy... Uh, so the Eagles played their last game here in Tampa before they, they lost, and that was the last game of Jason Kelsey's career. But I guess the guy who had been his trainer and had taped up his, his ankles for his whole career missed the Bucks game because he was going through chemo and radiation for cancer. Yeah. So Did he die? No. Oh. Before before Jason Kelsey's retirement speech, he let the guy tape him up one last time because the guy said that I can't let you retire if I'm not the last one to tape you up. So I mean, like I saw a video like that, and that like oh, that wow. shit makes me like that shit makes me cry. Like I like seeing positive sports videos. Huh. I like seeing you know people opening up cards, and I like um, I like a babe every now and again. A babe? Well, there's babes. You know, there's babes everywhere. There's babes that just pop up. You know, and they're, they're oh, well, what do the babes do? They're just walking around in barely any clothes, showing off their outfits or whatever. You know, with with some stupid caption of like, "You wish you were here with me on Monday." You know, we're that oh. kind of thing. Oh, you oh. know, on the on the reels on the Instagram. Oh, all. okay. I didn't know if like you were referencing porn or if no, you were... no, no. Just the, the algorithms just got to hot chicks all over the place. You yeah. Know? What's like your, and I know, I know you're married and all that sort of stuff, but if we're just talking about people you like to kind of, uh, window shop, like what is, what do you, who's, who's your, I, I hate to say celebrity crush, but so I can get like at least a, I was an just archetype telling, of person. I was just telling Phoebe last night, um, uh, stat, Man, Selena Gomez has really come into her own. I just said, when does Selena's Gomez? When did her boobs get so big? And she just goes, when she she ate a lot, and then she you know lost a lot of weight. So, um, Selena Gomez and Rihanna right now, I would probably say are my top Interesting. two. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. R- Rihanna is Rihanna is. I saw her, if you you know that she got paid what six million dollars to go uh, play the wedding of the most richest people in India or something like that. I, I don't think I knew that. Oh, no. I, fi- I figured you would know something. Like, hey, they paid her $6 yeah. million dollars to play a wedding and all that. And um, In India? Yeah. Interesting. She just exudes sex to me. So mm. that's just like when I see even her. Even while she's pregnant. Honestly, even while, when she was pregnant during the Super Bowl. and she's she was hot. She was slapping her, she was slapping her, vag- her vagina. Pu- you could see her pussy. I, was, but I, don't know why, I don't know why they slap it. But she was like slapping her mouth. Oh, I know. It was my favorite halftime performance of all time. I, I know that's controversial to say, but the dancing was just absolutely incredible. And I, I danced for years, so I can really appreciate it. You know what I'm it. talking about, but the yeah, way, like slapping yeah, I, the mouth. I know. I, I've watched that that halftime performance more than I'd like to admit. Oh, really? It was phenomenal. Really? Phenomenal. That's, I mean, I, maybe phenomenal. I should, so you so you can understand the yes. Laura Three. And with the like the faces, with the tongue out. Yeah. Yes. The, I mean, like, I don't want to, I, I mean this yeah. in the nicest way, but. She's nasty. Yeah, she's a, a dirty m- McNasty. And she's a billionaire, which is just a fucking even better. Even you know? Hotter. And she's a mom, and, you know, God, I guess I really need to get with Rihanna. I had no idea that I yeah, had this. Yeah, I, I didn't either. And, and it's funny you say Selena Gomez now, because Selena Gomez has been getting a lot of heat over the last few years for gaining a bunch of weight, but she was, like, real thin before. Yes. And yep. she's gotten a lot of hate and a lot of grief because she kind of has more of a womanly body now and also she's probably maybe not starving herself the way that she once did so people are giving her a lot of hate but she's got the hips she's got the boobs she's got the butt yeah no she is the i mean if you talked about like the uh, what's the word i'm looking for if the, uh, not the picturesque, but if you were trying to describe like a a woman with curves, like yeah. that would be it would be Selena Gomez. And I interviewed her in Miami back in 2013, and uh, we when I was working at the Top 40 station, like she, that's when she was really popular. She was fucking dating Justin Bieber, yeah. going through all that shit. But she just came out. She's been out a lot more. I don't know. She's the most followed person on Instagram, and uh, more than I, the Kardashians. I think so. Yeah, I oh, think wow. she has the most followers. Shit. And I saw a picture of her and Taylor Swift, and I mean, just the I I'm I've 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 morphed into liking boobs a lot, you know. So mm. like I just see them, and I see them now, and I turn to like just you know I go well, holy shit, good for her. Were you? Did you used to be a, a butt guy? Or, yes. 
Oh, okay. So I you changed. feel like you've made the transition from butt to boob. Don't care. Usually it goes in the other direction. Really? That's so in- yes. Yes. When you talk to, y- not that I do all the time, not that I'm surveying young boys, I'm not, but it seems like they have a- an obsession with boobs that doesn't fade as they get older, but then they start to really appreciate the butt as they kind of enter their, their 20s and 30s. I was the, I, I wanted, I was the butt. Like, I just wanted the butt so bad. And I mean, look, even, yeah. even when I see Nicki Minaj, you know, something like that. Oh. Even Oh, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, look, okay, it, uh, okay. auntie can auntie can work with it. Like, even when I see something <laughs> like I like I like that, you know, like that'll you know, or um, ice spice, like that'll turn my head. Really? Okay. But, but for some reason, years ago, I don't know, like eight nine years ago, I really started segueing into boobs, and I never gave a damn about cleavage before or women jumping up and down on their boobs. Really, like none of it yeah, even yeah. fucking phased me, and now it could fucking take up my whole day. Wow. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What is the, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all can that. Can I ask you a question and, and can you try to answer it honestly without feeling you, like you're going to offend anybody? Yes. How do you do you mind fake boobs or do you prefer natural, which I know is, uh, you know, blasphemous to say on this show because obviously, you know, Dan is a plastic surgeon and he 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 does breast augmentations. That's his main thing. Um, Bubba's very pro uh, breast augmentation. There's a lot of women that come that are uh, uh, Bubba Army that come from yeah. Bubba oh, 199 yeah. that are very uh, breast aug friendly. How do you feel about it? I know you're not like against it, but I'm just, do you prefer natural or what's, what's your deal? I haven't had a whole lot of experience with, you know, fake boobs. There was, you know, one of, uh, one of the girls that I've been with out of the four in my life had, you know, fake boobs. And I, but I was like, I was like 23. Like I didn't really have a whole lot to, they were just, they were there. I was just happy to have a naked woman in front of me. I wasn't like getting that involved with it, but, um, the or wo- just the way that they look, well, even just you don't have to touch. I love, I love, I love, I love the natural ones. Like okay. I see, have you seen like Kanye West's wife's like side boobs that she walks around naked and stuff? I've seen her pussy and her clit because she always puts it on um, display for everyone. Does the, she? B- the Bianca, woman. yeah, be- sensory thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's got like she's got natural boobs and like because she walks around naked, you can see they've got like that kind of like that hang, yeah, a that, good hang. Yeah. I know what you mean. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, she's yeah. like thirty. Yeah, it's like it's a really good hang. So look, then there's women with fake boobs and you can tell they're giant and they're fake and uh, you know far apart and all that shit. But like, <laughs> I'm I'm happy if it gives them more confidence. I'm happy. No, I'm asking but just your preference. If I'm l- yeah. listen, if I'm sitting around. And I'm looking to whack it. I'm whacking it to fake. For, uh, I'm whacking it to real boobs. Real boobs. Real okay. boobs. Yeah. yeah that, okay. th- those are those. That, and that, that's what I was looking at last night. Okay. Real ones. Real ones. Yes. Okay. Got you. Yeah. I'm always curious to to hear what men what men think. And is that okay? I, I mean, like, I no, would take. It's a, not okay or not okay. I'm just asking. Sorry, not to reference yeah. your old show, but <laughs> I would take a I would take a fake butt. Like I think if I would take a fake butt over fake boobs. Yeah. I, I was just I was just curious in terms of preference because I I try to get a, a lay of the land if it's something that all ma- males really like because sometimes uh, working here can be warped to think that all men prefer this about a woman and I know guys are paying attention to boobs and butts like that seems to be the main things that they seem to be obsessed with obviously you know they, they don't want an ugly face like that would be bad but right. that seems to be pretty obvious because women don't like an ugly face either but if we're talking about parts of the body um, sans the face I think men usually are talking about boobs butts Maybe legs. That was really my saving grace when I was young. Was okay. There, there was a time, and I'll never forget this, and it was probably one of the most complimentary moments that I ever had because I, I never really, I don't want to say like I never really got complimented that much with men. It, it was often fleeting, but because I didn't have a huge ass and I had no tits, it, it, they like, had to give you something to work with. Not just that, but it was not like striking where it was like wow like look at that and also i was i was pretty when i when i was young. i'm not ugly now well it depends who you ask but i in my hottest years i would say that i wasn't super i wasn't striking i wouldn't walk into a room and everyone like drops their jaw or anything like that but i remember there was this one moment where i was going to see a friend in san diego and uh, it was a, it was a guy, but I was friends with a lot of his friends, whatever. So we were meeting at his house, and I was kind of dressed up. And I walk in, and um, he had a friend on the couch. Again, I only met this person one night. I don't even remember his fucking name. 
And um, I walked in and he kind of, he looked up at me and then he looked back down at his phone, like didn't even, but then he did a double take. Oh. Yeah. So it was like, he was looking, he, he, he heard someone walking in and he's like, Hey, what's up? And he looked down and then he was like, hold on. And then he looked at me again and it wasn't creepy and it wasn't like he was trying to really riz me. If that's, you, you, oh, I you familiar you. with that word? I'm on riz. Yeah. And he just goes. You got some stems on you. <laughs> and then just like looked back down at his phone. Like it was so just nonchalant. He wasn't, tr- he, he like, Is I don't that, know. Okay, it just what? felt like a genuine compliment. Like he's like, <laughs> you objectively have nice legs. You and can't I, do that these days. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I don't remember what this guy looks like, but I just remember the feeling of being but, like, this is an objective truth. I have amazing legs. Can I tell you the one? This is, and this is why guys will go, and this is why women get creeped out because you liked that. You liked that this guy said you had nice stems. But if but, I, but he said it just like that. He wasn't like, damn, baby. He None of that shit. It was just like, he got some stems on you. And, like, he just said it like it was a fact. So, I mean, can we go? I like that. Can I just go up to a woman and go like, yeah, it's fucking nice knocks, baby. <laughs> Keep on keeping on. Like I, I don't. I don't know what. I, I think it helps if it's not a like a super the, sexualized <laughs> part of the body. Like it, boobs oh, and butt like are nice eyes. No, yeah. I know, but that's that's so like hackneyed and, and trite. But I'm trying to think that I'm trying to think of something that. There's nothing. It's you're right. It, I, like a back or a I don't know. You can't really. You know, hey, it nice ha- delts, bitch. It'd have to be a tattoo that you had on you. I think to be like, oh, I really love the tattoo on the middle of your back or something. Like I don't. No, that's even creepy. Well, I'm just no, trying I- to think of like something else that would work. God, your wrists are just unbelievable, baby. Uh, have a great day. Yeah, I guess it just doesn't. Maybe it's just legs because arms are, are a weird thing to compliment too, <laughs> nice unless arms, they're really yeah. defined. Because that's something you would compliment a man on. Like, hey, you got nice arms, and biceps. Like, damn, well, save some for the. Rest well, of us what bullshit. about what, what about when women are heaving their boobs out with cleavage? Like, are they doing it for their man? Are they doing it for them? Are they doing it because they want somebody to say nice rack? They're never. You, here's the thing. It's never for us. It's no. Here's the thing. It's always for them in the sense that they're like, I do this because it makes me feel good. Yeah, it makes you feel good when other guys are fucking staring at your huge tits or they say something about it. So, guys, so women do like that. But here's the thing: when they don't like it, is it, he, the this is why women are fucking retarded. Can I say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. The, this is why because they want certain men to notice them. The hot ones. Correct. But they don't want. But they don't realize that there's going to be a lot of collateral damage. Hello, like me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what's so annoying, and what a lot of women don't understand, or they do and they don't care, which might arguably be worse, is that the approach of a hot guy and a creepy guy is the, can be the exact same approach, but because the hot guy is hot. You find it flattering, but because the ugly guy is ugly, you're like, get away from me. You're creepy. Thank you. Even if it's the same approach. We've been saying this for years, Otto. Where have you been? I hear you. I've been saying it. You've been gone for three years, buddy. (laughs) I've been singing it from the from the from the foothills, man. But what I'm saying is, is that when women do that, they're obviously trying to do it for attention because guess what they're not doing when they're not doing it when they're home alone and no one's there and there's no screen or no camera to film them. Guess what they're not wearing? High heels, all makeup on, tits out. Right. Unless they just walk around in the buff and well, that's fine. It, it, it was like the 199 last time and I think it was Merch Crick and it was Maria Guatemala. Not and- a fan. Not a fan, which yes. is Big Red's wife. Yes, yes, and yes. they everybody just everybody had him out, and Maria had the side under every, and everybody's yes. just spilling out of their dresses and stuff. And I'm right. like, and imagine know. me sitting right next to them, <laughs> well, and how know. disappointed everyone is. Well, I know it's <laughs> I know it's for the show and the aesthetics and the party and all that, yeah, but yeah, I'm also yeah. like. You know, if you take a peek, is it going to be a huge fucking problem or not? No, I think it's I think it's an invited. Especially the peaks are fine. It's usually the comments that people say, that's, stop objectifying me. But if it's the hot millionaire that's objectifying you, all of a sudden you're totally fine with it. Yeah. So it's not the act. It's who's it's the perpetrator, if you will. Yep. That's who who matters. And so women get really mad and they'll only say that to people that they find unattractive because it's not just a, a blanket statement. It's who's approaching them, not how they're approaching them. You think Jelly Roll's attractive? No. He's, can I say that? I'm not going to 
No. What do you want to call the R word again? No, no. Well, it's not it's, a trap. I'm, I find the guy, he's got such a great personality. It's repulsive. I didn't know if it's kind of, you know. Personality can only take you so far. Really? Okay. All right. I just want to throw it that up help. there. It can help. It can help. He seems like a hell of a guy. It can help. But also, I mean. Wouldn't you feel safe with a guy like that? Nice big jelly roll man. I, I don't know. Safe from what precisely? Uh, what is he going to save me from? I don't know. I don't know. He just, I don't know why, bro. He just seems like a cool yeah, guy. I feel I, like he's going to be gassed after, you know, seven seconds of cardio. I can't. No. Like, how can he fucking protect me? No, he's great. He, he works out after he gets the face tattoos oh, all the time. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I don't. Okay, I don't. You t- all right. I, need, I need someone that takes care of their body, I, I at understand. least minimally. I, got, I gotcha. Just feel like he can't do that. He might know? be busy with the music, but he might, you know. He, he, I mean, that's no excuse. Well, There's plenty of celebrities that have time to, you know. But have you seen not I mean, eat ten? <laughs> but do you rolls? remember when like Timbaland was fat? Do you remember when like Dr. Dre was fat? Like those guys, no, those... not not like that. They weren't that. No, fat. but I'm just saying like they're, now they're like yoked up. They're jacked. They're older. Like everybody looks great. So I'm just saying I don't know if they, you know it could happen to Jelly Roll. <sighs> I mean, it could, but I, I'm not. I don't. I don't make the one day wager, which is something that a lot of people make. Like one day this person's going to be successful, or one day this person's going to be fit. It's like, no, fuck that. What you are today is probably how you're going to be in 20 years. Oh, not not guaranteed. Oh, shit. Not guaranteed. But more likely than not, you have to just. Well, you have to ask yourself whether, especially if it's like a romantic partner, you go, this is who they are right now. Could I live with this for the rest of my life? Whatever the case, you know, the, whatever the situation is, they're overweight, they're underweight, whatever. And if the answer is yes, because it's not that important to you, then great. But if you're like, I'm with them because I'm hoping that they're going to transform into a beautiful butterfly at some point in time. Well, that's a, a wager I wouldn't be willing to make. I am. You know what? I, that's very well said. I've never right? really heard it put it like that before. It's I've kind of plagiarized that idea, but I, okay. I elabor- the elaboration was my own. I like it. I but just... I heard one day wager from someone else. <laughs> I got to give credit to Matthew Hussey, the relationship guru, but he talked about the one day wager. Yeah. It's it, it makes sense. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. I, I you know I'm hoping I'm not the same person I am 20 years from now. But uh, you know I've got to strap down and make some changes, and it's yeah, going mean, to start today. You'll change. You'll change slightly. I think people change. The they evolve. I guess that's pretty much the same thing as changing, but. I think like core habits. Yes. Well, here's here's the way to determine if someone is probably going to change in the future is if they have a growth mindset. Are you familiar with this? No, no, no. So growth mindset is really you're kind of open to changing. You're open to new ideas. You're open to trying new things. You're open to being wrong. You're open to changing your mind with more information. If that's some like a tenant of your personality, then there's an opportunity for real growth, change, et cetera. But if you're like, I am who I am. I'm not going to change. Don't try to fucking change me. This is the way I do things. Fuck off. Then they probably won't change. No, I, I don't have that at all. You I don't used, have a growth mindset? I used, No, no, I do. I think oh. I, I used to be like that where I was like, this is how I am. Like, just deal with it and everything. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. I feel like there is maybe a small, small, tiny evolution. But I th- I've seen tweaks along the way. Yeah. You know, between 20 and 40 and 30 and 40 or whatever and sure. 20 and 30. So I feel like it's going to continue to tweak. I feel like I'm just becoming an overall more decent person. Good. I'm trying. Yeah. I, I try to have a growth mindset in the sense that I've just, this sounds like so obnoxiously deep and I'm not trying to be, but like, I'm just on a quest for like truth and trying to be better. So I try, and again, I have to remind myself, especially if we're having a debate on the air or something like that. And we get kind of fixated on like winning the debate or being right. But it's like, I, I want to just know the truth. So if someone presents some, information to me that I was un, uh, unaware of before, I'm more than happy to change my mind about anything. And I feel like I've done that in the past. I've changed my mind. I know you're not into politics that much, but I've changed my mind on some things that, you know, when I was younger or uh, before I had the information I yeah. have now, I've changed my mind. I go, okay, well, actually, I've, I have I don't feel that way anymore. As smart people do. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I think I've changed my mind. Probably the biggest thing I've changed my mind on are like abortion and, and capital punishment. You know, and I, yeah. it's not really popular. And I felt like w- when everyone was talking about abortion, they're like, you're the only woman. You don't believe in women's rights. I'm like, I don't think that's the equivalent, but okay. 
Um, and then capital punishment. I'm not for the death penalty and not. And everyone's like, why do you have so much sympathy for these horrible criminals? I'm like, I don't think I do. Well, they can't put there's no I mean, is there really a way to put these guys down humanely? I mean, they did the first. What was the one they did? I feel like it was in Texas a couple months ago. Oh. It was like a new way that they were doing. Oh, it was yeah. the first lethal injection, maybe. No, no, no. no. It was um, or they, nitrous oxide. Something, like something, that. something, something. But he like they said that he was. Not dead for like thirty minutes. It yeah. took, and then the, the guy that was in there, I don't know, like the priest or whatever, said it was the the worst thing he's yeah. ever fucking seen. Yeah, yeah. So no, that's not it. It has actually nothing to do with it being humane. Okay. A lot of these people, I feel like, should fucking suffer, especially for the crimes they've committed. Right. It's more so. I don't like. Or it's not more so. The reason is is because I don't like giving the state that the power and the ability to take lives. I don't like that dynamic. So I tell people I'm anti-capital punishment, not that because I have so much sympathy for the criminal or I really want to preserve their lives or I really care about putting them down nicely. It's more so because I don't like giving the state that much power. And so people conflate that with me having sympathy for these horrendous criminals that have killed, you know, raped and killed 20 men women children whatever the case may be i don't have sympathy for them it's the fact that i don't like giving the state that much power okay but people like can't understand that but anyways that's something that i've evolved and changed over the years i understand i understand that now yeah. it makes sense so, so, yeah, yeah i've ch- i used to not have a problem with it at all and now i'm just kind of on the fence but yeah. um you know i'll maybe one day it'll be really important to me but yeah. right now I must go, Anna. Oh, yes. I have a doctor's appointment. Oh, my word. I'm so sorry. And you I got have carried to away. Pee pee. Same, same. Small bladders over here. All right. You've been listening to Live Jew. Uh, Seth, thank you very much. Th- I enjoyed it. Thank as always. you. I'm going to make a friend, Anna. You better. <laughs> Play date coming soon with Brian and Seth. Goodbye.